Welcome to another session of Valenzuela Live Facebook Live Streaming in Mathematics 10. We are now at Quarter 3, Week 7, with the topics illustrating the probability of union of two events and finding the probability of A union B. At the end of this session, you are expected to First, illustrate the probability of union of two events. Second, find the probability of A union B. Let us begin the lesson with a quick recall of last week's discussion. Your task is to choose a reaction that corresponds to the correct answer. Just hit like, heart, wow, or haha react button. You have 5 seconds to choose your reaction. Are you ready? Let's start! Kindly refer to the problem presented to answer the questions that follow. Let me read it first. A teacher assigned two different activities in the Google Classroom. In a class of 55 students, 20 has turned in activity A. 19 submitted activity B. 11 students turned in both. And 27 students have not turned in. Which of the Venn diagrams below illustrate the given problem? Is it like, heart, haha, or wow? Five seconds, go! Alright, time is up! If you reacted, haha, good job! You are right! Let's move on to number 2. Refer to the given illustration to answer the questions correctly. How many students submitted activity A? Is it like, heart, haha, or wow? You've got 5 seconds, go! Time is up! If you've hit the hard react button, amazing, you are correct. Let's have the next one. Kindly refer to the problem presented to the questions that follow. How many students submitted activity B? Is it like, hard, haha, or wow? Five seconds, go! Time is up. If you've hit the WOW React button, awesome, you are correct. Let's proceed to number 4. What is the cardinality of A union B? Is it like, heart, haha, or WOW? You've got 5 seconds, go! Time is up. If you've hit the like react button, you are right. Let's go to the last one. What is the cardinality of A intersection of B? Is it like, heart, haha, or wow? You've got 5 seconds, go! Time is up! If you've hit the WOW React button, nice, you are correct. Wow, it seems you really have a good memory. Let's continue keeping your minds working. This time, let us see how good you are at sorting with this activity entitled Sortify. In this activity, your skills in sorting objects to its corresponding category will be tested. I will be flashing a set of objects, specifically outcomes of a certain probability experiment. All you need to do is to choose a reaction that corresponds to the category that best describes the object being flashed. For this round, hit like if the object is an odd number, and hard if it is an even number. Are you ready? Awesome! 
Let us sort the outcomes of rolling a die. Beginning with one dot. Is it like or hard? If you hit like, great. Now, let us have the two dots. Does this deserve a like or a heart? If you hit heart, that is correct. How about the three dots? Is it like or heart? If you hit like, awesome, you're right. Let us try the four dots. Would you hit like or heart? If you hit heart, good job. Next is five dots. Is it odd or even? Odd. Very good. Let us have the six dots. Is it like or heart? If you hit heart, that's correct. Nice. Let us continue sorting. This time, hit like if the object shown is an odd number. Heart if a prime number. Haha if both odd number or prime number. And wow if neither odd nor prime. Are you ready? Great. Once again, let us use the outcomes of rolling a die. Does one dot deserve a like, heart, haha, or wow? If you hit the like button, perfect. Next, two dots belong to prime number. Yes. Three dots go to both. Exactly. How about four dots? Good. It is neither prime nor odd. Five dots deserve a haha. -ha. Way to go. Lastly, six dots are perfect in neither prime nor add. Amazing. At this point, let us try using standard deck of cards and go on with sorting. Hit like if the card that appears is a black card and heart if it is a red card. Are you ready? Great. Is an ace of diamond a black or red card? A red card. Nice. How about two of diamond? Is it black or red? It is also red. Perfect. Next is king of club. That is a black card. Perfect. Is an ace of spade deserve a like or a heart? Good. What about an eight of heart? Yes, it is a red card. Continuously, hit like if the card that appears is a face card. Heart if it is a red card. And haha if the card is both face card or a red card. Ready? What is an ace of heart? Does it deserve a like, heart, or haha? If you hit heart, you are correct. Is queen of heart a face card, red card, or both? Both. You've got it right. Queen of diamond belongs to Awesome! It is both a face card or a red card. Three of diamond. Does it deserve a like, heart, or haha? If you hit heart, you are right. What is jack of spade? Is it a face card, red card, or both? Yes, a face card. Lastly, it like if the card is a spade, heart if it is a black face card, and haha if the card is both a spade or a black face card. 
Does an ace of spade deserve a lack? Heart or haha? If you've hit like, that's it. Next, where does queen of spade belong? If you've answered both, good job. Does an eight of spade deserve a like, heart, or haha? If you've hit like, you are right. How about a jack of club? Does it belong to spade, black face card, or both? If you hit heart, fantastic. Where does king of spade belong? If you've answered both, that is right. And that concludes our first activity. Did you enjoy it? If yes, well, it's good to hear that. Undoubtedly, learning also takes place, right? Now, what do you observe in our previous activity? Perfect! Some objects can be sorted out in just one category, while some in two categories. Just like union of two events, outcomes may be found in event A or event B or both. Before we illustrate probability of the union of two events, let us look back at the definition of the union of two sets. The union of A and B denoted A union B is the set of all elements X in U, such that X is in A or X is in B. It can be written as A union B contains X such that X is an element of A or S is an element of B. In Venn diagram, union of two events is represented like this. At this point, let us explore how probability of union of two events is illustrated. Let us consider this problem. A delivery rider is designated to deliver goods in Valenzuela. What is the probability of selecting a barangay that begins with the letter M or P? First, let us look at the list of all the barangays in Valenzuela. Then, encircle all the names of barangay that begins with letter M. Those are Malanday, Malinta, Mabolo, Mapulang Lupa, Marulas, and Maysan. Thus, there are a total of six names of barangay that begins with the letter M. Let us illustrate the following outcomes in Venn diagram. The capital letter M and a red circle represent the event of selecting a name of barangay that begins with the letter M. The number of outcomes is 6. Subsequently, let us encircle the names of the barangay that begins with the letter P. Those are Mariancillo Villa, Pulo, Pasolo, Punturin, Palasan, Poblacion, Parada, and Paso de Plas. Hence, there are eight outcomes. At this point, let us illustrate the following outcomes previously mentioned. The capital letter P and the blue circle will represent the event of selecting a name of barangay that begins with the letter P. The number of outcomes is 8. Take note that there were barangays that were not included in events M and P. And there are 19 of them, which is written outside the two circles. Now, let us use the Venn diagram to find the probability of selecting a barangay that begins with the letter M or P. To find the probability of M union P, Simply add the number of outcomes in M or P, that is 6 plus 8, divided by the sum of the number of outcomes in A, P, and the number of outcomes not included in A or B, that is 6 plus 8 
plus 19. Simplifying the denominator, we obtain 33. Adding 6 and 8 gives us 14. So, probability of M union P equals 14 over 33. Therefore, the probability of selecting a barangay that begins with the letter M or P is 14 over 33. Did you get it? If you have questions, do not hesitate to drop them in the comment section. Let us take another example. There are 60 children playing in the People's Park playground. 30 of them like to play on the slide. 20 of them like to swing. 15 of them like both. What is the probability that you select a child who likes to play slide or swing? Again, let us apply the Venn diagram. We let event A be the number of children who like to play on the slide. We let event B be the number of children who like to play on the swing. Now, how do we put the number of children in each region in the Venn diagram? Great! First, we look for the common outcomes, which in this case is 15. If this is the number of children who likes to play both slide and swing. We then write 15 on the overlapping circles. Now, how many children do we need to write in event A to come up with a total of 30? Yes, we write 15 because the other 15 is from the overlap of the circle, which is still part of event A. Now, how many children should be put in event B to make a total of 20? Exactly, we put 5 because the other 15 from the overlap of the circle is still part of event B. Notice that there are outcomes not found in events A or B or in both A and B. That is 25. To find the probability of A union B, we simply add the outcomes that are in A only, or B only, or both. That is 15 plus 5 plus 15, divided by the sum of the outcomes in event A or B, or in both A and B, and the outcomes not included in events A or B or both. That is 15 plus 15 plus 5 plus 25. Simplifying the denominator, we obtain 60. Solving the numerator yields to 35. So, probability of A union B is 35 over 60. Simplifying the fraction, we get 7 over 12. Therefore, the probability of selecting a child who likes to play slide or swing is 7 over 12. Let us try example number 3. Karen and Friday decided to play Dama using the chess pieces in Valenzuela City People's Park. They agreed that they will roll a die to determine who will make the first move. Both will roll the die. And whoever gets the lower number makes the first move. Karen rolls the die and gets a 3. What is the probability that Friday gets the first move? To solve this problem, we first consider the outcome when Karen rolled a die. That is 3. Consequently, for Friday to win the first move, she must get an outcome lower than 3 which are 1 or 2. To present the probability of each event, apply the formula number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. We know that the total outcomes in rolling a die is 6. So, for 1 dot, we obtain probability of 1 is equal to 1 over 6. However, 
for two dots, we also have 1 over 6. To get the probability of getting a 1 or 2 dots, we add 1 over 6 by 1 over 6, which results to 2 over 6. Simplifying it, we obtain 1 third. Therefore, the chance of Karen getting the first move is 1 third. At this point, it is time to check your understanding about illustrating the probability of the union of two events. Let us have the activity number 2. In this activity, your task is to choose a reaction that corresponds to the correct answer. Just hit like, heart, wow, or haha react button. You have 5 seconds to choose your reaction. Are you ready? Let's start. The number of students enrolled in algebra class and geometry class in a certain university is represented by Venn diagram. What the probability that a student is enrolled in the algebra class? Is it like, art, haha, or wow? Five seconds, go! Alright, time is up. If you reacted, wow, good job. You were right. Let's move on to number two. What is the probability that a student is enrolled in a geometry class? Is it like, hard, haha, or wow? Five seconds, go. All right, time is up. If you reacted like, excellent. That's right. Let's go to number three. What is the probability that a student is both enrolled in a geometry class and algebra class? Is it like, art, haha, or wow? Five seconds, go. All right, time is up. If you reacted, wow, amazing. You are correct. Finally, what is the probability that a student is enrolled in a geometry class or algebra class? Is it like, art, haha, or wow? Five seconds, go. All right, time is up. If you reacted, ha ha, fantastic, you've got it right. It is interesting to know that you, grade 10 students, were able to figure out the probability of the union of two events by just looking at the figures in the Venn diagram. However, there is another way to find the probability of the union of two events, and that is by using a formula. Use probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B if there is no common element. And use probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of the intersection of A and B if there is a common element. Let us now apply the formula. What is the probability of drawing an ace card? P of A, or a queen card, P of Q, from a standard deck of cards. We know that there are 4 aces out of 52 cards in a standard deck. So, probability of A is 4 over 52. Similarly, there are also 4 queens out of 52 cards in a standard deck. This yields to Probability of Q equals 4 over 52. Now, observe the two events. Are there common outcomes? Nice! There are no common outcomes. Hence, we use 
probability of A or Q equals probability of A plus probability of Q. Substitute each representation. We have probability of A union Q equals 4 over 52 plus 4 over 52. Following the rule in adding similar fractions, we obtain probability of A union Q equals 8 over 52 or 2 over 13. Therefore, the probability of drawing an ace card or a queen card from a standard deck of cards is 2 over 13. Did you get it? If you have questions, do not hesitate to drop it in the comment section. Let us have example number 5. One marble is drawn at random from a bag containing 2 orange, 4 red, and 6 black marbles. Find probability that it is red or orange. Let us start solving this problem by representing the probabilities of each event. P of R represents the probability of red marbles and is equal to 4 over 12. P of O represents the probability of orange marbles and is equal to 2 over 12. Since no marbles cannot be red and orange at the same time, there are no common outcomes. This implies using the formula probability of R or O equals probability of R plus probability of O. Substituting the probabilities of each event gives us probability of R or O equals 4 over 12 plus 2 over 12. By applying the rule in adding similar fractions, we obtain 6 over 12. Simplifying this fraction yields 1 half. Therefore, the probability of drawing a red or orange marble is 1 half. Let us try the last example. A pair of dice is rolled. What is the probability that the two dice show the same number or that the sum of the numbers is less than 5? Let us first represent the probabilities of each event. Probability of A represents the event that the dice show the same number. And probability of B represents the event of getting the sum less than 5. Now, let us figure out the possible outcomes of rolling two dice. What do you think are the possible outcomes? Perfect. To determine the total 6 raised to n, where n is the number of dice. Thus, 6 raised to 2 equals 36 outcomes. Now, let us count the possible outcomes comes on each event. Starting with the event A. How many doubles are there? Great! We have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and 6, 6. Hence, there are 6 doubles. Getting the probability of this event we obtain 6 over 36. Let us count the event B this time. Which of these has the sum of less than 5? Exactly. They are 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 1. Thus, there are 6 outcomes with sum of less than 5. Writing it in probability, the result is 6 over 36. From the outcomes in events A and B, can you spot what are common? Great! 1, 1, and 2, 2 are the common outcomes. To represent the common outcomes, we write probability of A intersection B. 
taking its probability, we obtain 2 over 36. Given these three probabilities, what are we going to do with them to solve the probability of A union B? Correct. Simply add probability of A and probability of B. Then, to avoid counting the common outcomes twice in both A and B, subtract the probability of A intersection of B. Thus, we have 10 over 36. Or, 5 over 18. Therefore, the probability that a pair of dice turned up double or is less than 5 is 5 over 18. At this point, let us see how well you understand how to find the probability of the union of two events by answering the set of problems. In this activity, you will need a scratch paper and pen to solve the problem. You will be given one minute to solve and to comment your final answer. Are you ready? Let's begin. A bag contains 7 white balls, 11 orange balls, and 12 red balls. If a ball is drawn, find the probability that it is a white or a red ball. You have one minute, go. Alright, if you've answered 19 over 30, you did it. Let us see the next one. A card is drawn at random from a 52 deck of cards. Find the probability of getting a heart or a face card. You have one minute, go. you've answered 11 over 26, you got it right. You are doing great. Great 10 students, give me a virtual high five. Nice. I think it is time to sum up the things that you have learned in today's discussion. How do we solve for the probability of the union of two events? In solving the probability of the union of two events, if the two sets do not have elements in common, use probability of A or B equals probability of A plus the probability of B. Otherwise, use probability of A or B equals probability of A plus the probability of B 
minus the probability of A intersection B. At this point, let me read and answer some of the frequently asked questions. Is it possible to use the formula probability of A or B equals probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection of B when A and B have no common elements? Yes, it is possible. Note that when there are no common elements, we substitute zero to the probability of A intersection of B. Thus, Subtracting 0 from the sum of probability of A and probability of B. And we know that subtracting a number to 0 will result to the number itself. If you have further questions regarding the topics discussed, you may ask your mathematics teacher. Of course, for this week's home learning task, solve the following completely. Before I end this session, let us all reflect on the quote from a German philosopher, Arthur Schopenhauer, Life is a game of dice. Even if you don't throw the number you like, you still have to play it and play it well. Alright, thank you so much grade 10 students for joining us today. This has been your mathematics live streaming teacher, Mr. Junior Cesar G. Presto from Malinta National High School. See you again next time.